Hello and welcome to the State of Events, where event professionals connect. Well, this year is coming to an end, and I think we all can agree it's been a very interesting one. Whether it was met with warmed hearts or heartbreak, setbacks or growth, pivot after pivot, you made it to this day. Listen in as we take you through the journey of us launching this podcast show. And it is our hope that you too will be reminded of your 2020 journey. From our podcast and digital content platform team, happy holidays and an incredible happy new year. Welcome to Year in Review. I am joined by the original team, the original podcast producer team. I have my girlfriend, Vanessa Oliver, and of course, my sister from another mister, Miss Zoe Moore. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Yes, that's how we say it. Yes, with the Y-A-A-A-A-S. Yes. Yes. Love it, love it. We're here for year in review. For those of you who are uh, wondering why we decided to do this, um, I reached out to the original podcast producing team for the State of Events, and I said, hey, y'all, we have had an amazing year. We've had a crazy year. We've had an interesting year. But nonetheless, this year, we actually launched and produced a podcast. And uh, if you're anything like me, uh, if you're doing something in a, po- in a in a pandemic, you're considered an expert. So um, as far as I'm concerned, we're podcast experts at this point. <laughs> Never thought it would happen. And I, and I said no to you. I remember you did. When you first talked about this vision. I was wow. like, nope, <laughs> I'm not doing it. And that yep. was pre-pandemic. And then I was bored, and then you got me in. Uh-huh. There you go. There you go. In a different way. She said, "Nope, nah, nah, I'm good." Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so you know, right there is actually where I want to start. I actually want to talk a little bit about last year, 2019, how this all came about, how we got to where we are, um, and, and and you know, I, I selfishly want to say that where we're going has a little bit to do with the fact that we were able to do this. Because I feel like I said, I, I feel like if you do something in a pandemic for the first time, you're an expert. And so now we're just really riding on uh, on the on the coattails of, of, of what this has done for some of us. 2019 was actually probably worse for myself as a family uh, than, than 2020. I was hit by a vehicle uh, while walking across the street <clears throat> and it put me out for pretty much the whole year. I had two contracts last year and they were actually repeated clients. And so they already knew my work and they knew that I could do something from literally sitting and laying down because that's where I was. And so as I was looking ahead to 2020, I said, what am I going to do? I, I, I've been out this whole year. I, I don't I don't even know what's ahead for me. How do I kind of get back into stuff? And um, some of you have heard me mention that, you know, I'm a woman of, of prayer. I believe that prayer works and it shifts and it moves and it changes. If anything, it changes our own hearts. And so as I was praying, um, I really believed that I got a download that said, you are going to launch a podcast. And my first response was, what is a podcast? Because quite frankly, last year, I didn't know what a podcast was. I had heard about them. I saw the word and I, I probably listened to maybe five minutes of one. And I said, this is a radio show. Like, why are they calling it a podcast? Just, it's called digital radio. <laughs> but it's, that's all I had. But as you would know that you, you, you come from that kind of background. Didn't know what a podcast was. And so um, I said, OK, well, you know, if this typically when when ideas are not from yourself, typically that means that they're they're going to happen and they're going to work. And so I just went with it. I called up Zoe and I said, OK, I, I need you to roll with me. You know, you've known me since I was 15. Mm-mm, that was on the balcony. No, no, no. We were Wait, on the what balcony. Was it? How'd it go? How'd it go? What, what is your take on that story? Oh, yes, yes. I remember it quite well. Like It was yesterday. Once upon a time, no, no, actually we were on the balcony. Um, we were looking out at the city of LA. Sonia then tells me that you said to me, um, let's start a podcast. And I looked at you like, do you know the kind of year that I've had? Do you know the kind of year that you've had? I'm not doing any new projects. Actually in 2020, my, my 2020 vision is to relax. I think I'm going <laughs> to pause everything and just like vacation and pause and and just take a moment to myself. I'm not doing any new projects because next year I'm going to just sit around and plan. That's that's that was my response to you. And you were like, come on, come on. And I was like, nope, not doing it. 
That's see, it. see, the approach I have to have, Vanessa, see, this, you're, you're going to be seeing a little bit of how relationships work. So the way I have to approach Zoe is I always has to be like this. Hey, let's do this. Hey, let's do that. <laughs> and, you know, she likes foreplay. Let's do this. Let's do that. <laughs> Yeah, foreplay, my, no, foreplay that I need, I need the strategy. I need you to tell me the how, when, what, you know, Vanessa, how we do in meetings. I need you to tell me all the details. And if you can't tell me the answers to how everything's going to go, and then she hit me with the, you know, I'm a woman of faith. I'm a woman of prayer. And I'm like, I get it. I understand. I'm glad that that's the download that you got. But nope, I'm not doing it. <laughs> exactly what she said. Exactly what she said. And for that matter, I too, when I first got it, was like, I'm not doing that. I don't even know what that is. So anyway, so we, we move right along. The rest of the year, you know, kind of starts um, <clears throat> coming to an end. And I think about s- early summertime, if I'm not mistaken, Vanessa, I had, I was introduced to Zoe's uh, team that she was working with heavily for the past, you know, a couple of years previous to that. And your name was on there. And I just reached out. We all kind of reached out on that email and was like, hey, what are y'all doing? Let's all connect. And I remember seeing your name, Vanessa, seeing what you do. But for whatever reason, we got on the phone and I remember I was in the car. I was passing uh, UCLA. I was on the phone with, you know, I had a, an arranged or a, a scheduled phone call with you and I called you up and then just, we just started flowing. I was like, where have you been? I felt like you're another sister from another mister. Who are you? Talk a little bit about sort of how that call went and then what that eventually led us to do. Well, the way that I remember it was, you know, we all, <laughs> um, Zoe got all of us together and, um, you know, I sent out this email to each and every person because I was at that point where I said, look, I'm going to be proactive and I'm going to reach out to each of these people. And I think Sonia was like probably the only person to bite the bait and be like, yeah, let's go ahead and get together. And so um, we coordinated a call. I remember I was on my balcony and we, Pearl, you're right. We were talking for probably about like a good hour or so. There's and something told, about those balconies. <laughs> I'm telling you, something about the balcony and being able to see. I was looking over Sacramento. You guys were looking over L.A. But, you know, we were all, I think, doing the same thing. Um but uh, talking to Sonia, I don't remember what you had going on, but she kept like pausing and be like, I'll be right back. And I was like, who is this girl? <laughs> she keep disappearing on me in this call. But you came back and I remember you just telling me the most empowering story about what cannabis had done in your life. And uh, we were talking about it and I was just like, this is what it's all about. This is why I'm in this industry. And quite honestly, um, that was probably one of the first moments, the epiphanies of why I was in the cannabis industry, why I was doing events, why I was trying to make a change using what my services are and what my experiences are to create positive influences in a, in a market that was really inundated with still like a lot of stigma. And, um, you know, you has inspired that. And so we started talking. We're like, well, what can we do to further, like, get the education out there? And that's when, you know, we just kind of started brainstorming and saying, hey, well, you know, this is uh, these are some of the opportunities we see. Let's let's see what we can make happen based off of, like, you know, this education. So in 2019, that was probably the end of the first year of me transitioning out of traditional medicine to treat an autoimmune disorder. And I had started uh, using holistic approaches for everything. And CBD was a huge part of my journey. Um, And and just to know that you all should know that I have, uh, with the exception of this injury that I had yesterday, because my son startled me and I banged my foot. um, But uh, so now it's producing a little bit of inflammation, but I have actually been inflammation free for at least three months. And Zoe knows this, there would not be a week that went by when I was not inflamed from, from rheumatoid arthritis. What's, what's interesting to me, you know, is we're connected in, in so many ways and I have the same story. And I think when I met Vanessa, I met Vanessa actually um, through one of a mutual friend uh, that Shelby, remember, yeah, Shelby introduced us. She told me about Vanessa and all the work that she does. But then when I heard about you know, what she does in cannabis space, I was just interested because I come from the military and I was anti anything cannabis, THC and all the other kind of stuff. And I have the same story. When I got out, I had knee issues, a lot of inflammation, joint inflammation and all the other kind of stuff. And so what I saw through connecting all of us was 
yeah, we can support each other. We do events. You know, there's a there's a knowledgeable understanding of THC, both for recreational, but also medicinal. And her, she's so knowledgeable. She's an amazing event planner. She's a go getter. She's a mom. So I'm just seeing all these women just do amazing things. Men as, as well, just people in the, in the industry and always wondering. And I think that's what the premise of, you know, LB Alliance was was we should be collaborating. Like we're not in competition with each other. We need to have those conversations. So when I saw Vanessa send out that email and Sonia, you responded. And then I saw that kind of spark, literally a spark, light between the two of you. I was like, yes, that's exactly what I want. I want all these conversations and events to take place. And then I know that led into you all doing an event together or at least putting together an event pre-pandemic, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, that actually um, a great segue. So, so Vanessa and I are chit chatting, and she, um, I can't remember the first month that we had this conversation, but we had an early fall conversation about an uh, an event that you had envisioned, Vanessa. That mm-hmm. it, it was an infusing event to incorporate uh, the Southern hospitality feel. Um, there was a lot of promotions about it, so it's no secret. It was called Soulfully Elevated. It was an amazing curated event that we were working on tirelessly, oh by the way. We even like flew out here. We flew. Let me tell you something. I flew from LA to the Bay Area for a taste testing of all of yes. the food that was going, that, that oh, food was bomb. Shout food. out, yeah. Chef Bama. Chef Bama and um, Next Level Edibles because he was the one with the cupcakes. Mm. Flew out there. We were so, 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 I mean, we had done everything. I took up the logistical management, Vanessa executive producing. Every I was about element, to be staffed. And Y'all were we, about to hire me to come in and do staffing. Yeah. But nope. Mm-mm. We had an entire team. And then February starts tailing out. We're preparing March because March was going to be the month that we launched this. We're going to go up there to the, uh, to, to the Bay Area mm-hmm. to do this. And February starts ending and starts March. And for so, something was in the air, y'all. Something was <laughs> before we started like, should we be moving forward with this? Because there were all these, um, there's all these disclaimers going out. Well, this is shutting down and this is shutting down. COVID is coming. Like it came like rapid speed, just like the virus. I mean, events were shutting down left and right. Mm-hmm. And people, you know, they were really trying to power through. The venue was really trying to power through saying, we're going to stay open. But we're like, we don't know y'all. You know, people are trying, but you know, this is taking people out right now. And I remember- I remember watching the emails and and kind of like first you all tried to like reduce the amount of time, then reduce the amount of people, then make it hybrid. And then you were trying everything just to hold on. And and that tenacity of an event planner, like we're troubleshooting in real time, trying to figure out how do we get around whatever is coming? Because we don't know what at least is. There were at least three pivot plans. And I remember about the second one, What I was really concerned with, I don't know if you remember this, Vanessa, but what I was really concerned with was the epicenter for the Bay Area. It probably has changed because everything changes. But at that time, the epicenter for for, uh, uh, you know, mass cases was actually on the water yes. on a cruise boat that was docked <laughs> where we were having our event. <laughs> we were having our event and there is a literal boat that is a cruise ship that is stationed right near the venue and you can see it from the venue and we know that it is a COVID epicenter and they're like should we let these people off or should we keep them on the water? And I said, you know, this could either be very depressing and we're just watching this go down from the event or like they're letting people off and be like, wait a minute, this is really close to our event. Mm-hmm. So we had like, we had to make an executive decision. And Sonia was like on the ball of like how we were going to communicate this to everybody. It was, yeah, crazy. I, was I was going through similar things. Um, y'all were doing that event. I was trying to figure out if I was going to be able to support you all in that event. Because at the same time, I had clients that just were like, should we go do this? Should we do that? And the cancellations started coming in. And so we were all asking each other the same questions. Like, are we doing in-person in events? Like, is it going to happen? Should we be traveling? Nobody knew. Like, it was it was a scary moment. But then when they, those final cancellations came through, I was like, all my projected revenue down the drain. And I was like... 
uh, I guess this is the pause that I wanted. <laughs> you know, <laughs> well, it happened to you. You didn't even have to go into a pause. I the pause happened to you. Real. Can you imagine? Yeah. I mean, not only the lost projected dollars, but the lost investments. I mean, that's crazy, right? At this point, just so you all know, at this point, I wasn't thinking about the podcast. It had not resurfaced yet. It had not resurfaced yet. But I remember in prayer, in the month of March, I'm like, okay, God, you better have a plan. <laughs> and it came again. It said, remember the podcast? You didn't know why you were going to do it. You didn't know, you didn't want to do it. And you didn't know when it was going to happen. Because at that, because in 2020, in 2019, though, I didn't know when it was going to happen. Mm -mm. It was like, you should do, well, excuse me. It did come, you're going to have a podcast next year. But I didn't know when, how, the, all those. And quite frankly, sometimes when you get an idea, you think it's going to come soon. But you really don't know when it's going to come, right? Right. So it wasn't until then I was like, oh. And, and that leads me to the podcast came, came back. And I reached out and I said, hey, y'all, call me crazy, but I think this is the time. And I just remember that March 19th, I took Lincoln out of school and I just looked today because I wanted to make sure I quoted the date of our first episode. March 30th was our first episode. So from March 17th to March 30th, something happened. Wow, that's crazy because I thought, yeah, that's, that is, the timing is interesting because March 13th is the day that I signed my lease here in Atlanta. So that's when I had just moved and then everything shut down. And I was on a lot of Netflix binging. And so, yeah, that's about two weeks when I started to get bored and I was like, okay, <laughs> what is life? What am I going to do? So it kind of came, well, it did come at the, at the right time. I guess that is the divinity that you speak of, right? It was right on time. Can I read something? Because this, this is the conversation that I remember when the podcast came about. For me, I got a text message from Sonia on March 17th at 11.52 a.m. And it said, I just had a revelation. Call me when you can. Next text message says, she didn't even give me a response, like a chance to actually call her. She just started going into it. So I knew she was excited. Here's my idea. Many are at a loss at what to do with previously planned events or events that are up and coming. Would you be interested in holding a free event professional consultation webinar with me and another event professional? Just something short yet informative for people on best practices for rescheduling, restructuring, and continued engagement. No pressure. Just trying to respond with our expertise to this crisis. <laughs> wow. <Not sure. laughs> Wait, can, can you give me a screenshot of that? Yes, please ahead send and, uh, that over. We need to put that in the books. We yes, that needs to be books. a social media uh, company that with the social media posts that we do for this year in review. That is beautiful. Um, Vanessa, what, what you speak of is it was, I don't know, why, how did it get from being a webinar to being a podcast? I have no idea. It, it went through a because lot. you didn't know what a podcast was. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Sounds about right. So our launch episode, March 30th, 20 minutes, it was a three-part series, The State of Events. It was, it, oh, okay. It was called The State of Events. The name of the podcast, mm -hmm. it was part mm -hmm. one, and it says in, the, in this three-part series event, professionals give guidance on best rescheduling and restructuring pra practices during these unprecedented times. Remember that, remember that, say, that mm -hmm. statement, unprecedented times? Oh, my gosh. If I had a dime for every time I heard that word. Pivot, we'll cover, unprecedented. Pivot and unprecedented times. Unprecedented times will cover resources and relief support, virtually transforming your event and marketing, and continued communication. Mm. It was showing people how to pivot, y'all. Get a snap on that one, yes. Thank you that, you know, obviously, you know, I fall back to what my actual, you know, degree and trade is, which is entertainment. And so I knew at least how to host because I had already been hosting. <laughs> so I knew how to host. Vanessa came uh, with her knowledge of all things radio and production. Zoe came with, of course, the amazing structure and procedures that she brings. She got us completely together from an administrative standpoint with the documentations that we needed, scheduling and basically the, 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 the wheels of making any project run. And we, we had this episode and I interviewed our producers. 
shifted, like you said in the beginning, um, the things that we've done during the pandemic, it does kind of position you as, a, as an expert, but more so the fact that you're willing to speak on something, uh, you know, basically articulate something that you really don't know anything about. Like, I mean, you know what you're going through and you're willing enough to be vulnerable and, and share with other people the methods that you're using to overcome or what resources you're looking at to stay informed. But that, that resilience or that strength to do something like that does position you as a, as a voice to be heard, you know? And I think giving us that opportunity he really awoke something in me. I was like, hmm, you know what? I do have something to say. I have a lot of opinions. I'm a very opinionated person and a podcast is the perfect place to express those opinions. So thank you. That's what I'll say for that. And, and, and a huge thank you from me to you guys because, you know, it's uh, it's interesting having to um, to hear someone give you an idea, a dream, a vision, and then whether you know how to do it or not, right? Just simply going along for that ride and that journey and being a part. I mean, we lost a team member because quite frankly, you know, growing, growing pains hurt and we didn't know what we were doing. We knew the know-how that we have from our industry and the specifics that we have there, but we truly didn't know how to then transform though that expertise into this particular venue platform whatever and so just being along for that ride and and willing to give your time and then you know this is called you know sweat equity we, we didn't in theory we didn't pay each other for real for real um but but we did it and and we're on this side of things things which is how i want to kind of transition so fast forward a couple months vanessa hits us with we are an event industry podcast we're event professionals maybe we should do an event <laughs> so can you talk a little bit about our first event can educate so me being in cannabis obviously i was thinking you know <clears throat> the first event would be great to uh showcase the different elements of um you know, event professionals. And one thing we haven't heard a lot about are event professionals in the cannabis industry. It's, um, it's a very niche market. Um, and because of that, there's a lot of um, uncharted territories that people do not know how to navigate. So when we're talking about ways to pivot, but we're also talking about um, different instances of what an event planner means, um, it was just, it just seemed like a really great opportunity to um, introduce what it means to be an event planner in the cannabis space. And even just in the course of curating like this, um, this event, we saw that, you know, there is uh, uh, event planners that are in the corporate cannabis event space and then there's a social cannabis event space and then there's the weddings and we really we built it out the same way that we would do any virtual event we had our technical producer Zoe coming in there and man I did not envy her job because we were working with the platform that was um, that was very interesting it was happening too we ain't gonna we ain't gonna hold back we're gonna let them know that they have some struggles <laughs> at the beginning I've growing heard pains, a lot growing better. Pains. Look, growing pains, they were going through it too. They were remote, but yeah, it was, it was definitely challenging, but thank you for the challenge. Through the beauty of it all, what, you know, and losing, you mentioned earlier, losing a team member and, and growing the technical issues on uh, Hopin was it did allow us to pause and realize everybody was trying to figure out mm -hmm. <laughs> what everything was. And so people who could respond, if you had a technical platform and you could respond into this virtual event space, you know, all we needed to know by email is, are you going to understand that I need answers to these questions? And I felt like they did a really good job in responding to those questions, even if the answers didn't get us all the way to the place that we needed, but seeing the resilience of people, I'll keep using okay. that. Word. That's my word of 2020 is seeing how people just were able to pivot <laughs> that, word, that word and figure out, okay, I know I got to do something and whatever barriers you're going to face, if you're patient with me, we'll come out on the other side of this together. And yet we still 
pulled off this event and it was a great event. And just like any sort of um, event that you do in the industry where our job as event planners is to make it look easy. Our job is when people come to us, they have a great experience and they, they don't realize how many fires were burning behind the scenes that we were putting out. And, and that is what tells you that you're good at what you do. And so to be able to work with these three ladies and not only perform an event that is in the cannabis space, but perform an event, a virtual conference, right? And still have, I, how many people did we have? A hun, uh, um, we, a we definitely tickets. sold out and I think we had a hundred well, tickets slated. Yeah, you know, and just to have so many moving pieces going on with this, it just shows you like, look, these women went from live events to virtual events in a matter of months because of a pandemic. And we were able to do it almost flawlessly, or at least it looked flawless to the people that were participating in the event. There's so many details of this event to talk about, but flawless (laughs) award goes to Vanessa because Vanessa was dealing with multiple computers and cell phones. She was talking to the speakers, trying to prepare, and our first room wouldn't open up. So <laughs> you can hear her audio in another room. And, and this, wait, this is, this is her. For those of you who are listening, I'm so sorry you can't see this, but I got to show my girls what Vanessa's face looks like when trouble is going on. it was this smooth I mean it was like my name is Vanessa Oliver and I hear noise in the background but I'm going to ignore it and you are too because we're here live for the and I mean it was just it just was so smooth and you were not professional you were not bothered you were unbothered but you were flustered but you I mean it was such an event planner move where everything was so still and you made me calm and I was cracking I think that's parenthood isn't that parenthood? <laughs> I was like fires all around her. Little fires everywhere. No, no, no pun intended. But little fires everywhere. And the calm on your face was like, oh my gosh, if this doesn't get fixed right now, I'm going to blow a gasket. But it's okay because we have. And you know people. what? You know what? I don't know if you all remember this, but the very thing that we said was not going to happen is the one that happened because we were like, that main stage is not going to go off. I bet you anything is not going to go off. It's not going to go off. Uh, you're up, start of the time. Start of the press play. No main stage. My, my, my. And y'all don't know it that I had to like shut down everything, go back into the backstage and play around with some stuff. And I still didn't know if it was going to work but we let the first one go off in like a breakout room then we got the main stage and then once you know it's always like that with an event and I think at the end is what we said this was so much like a live event because that first 30 minutes of getting started is always like oh my gosh everything's going crazy Mm -hmm. and then once you get past that first hurdle it starts to coast like you're just like I was in here like uh, eating to have my coffee. I was between computers and I was just like, okay, I'm back in my zone. This feels kind of good. Like I I like this, you know, putting my little comments in the chat group and communicating with Sonia and Sonia and I, if y'all don't know anything about Sonia and I, this admin stuff, we may struggle on these meetings to, to get on the same page. But when we're doing an event, it's just like, the sister Ding from yang. another district. Ding Ding yang, man. Ding yeah. Ding yang. We just support each other in a way that I'm like, she just read my mind. And I told my son, Jordan, I was like, this is your auntie. This is where she shines. This is, this is where she just, oh, I, I just can't wait to do live events again. But doing the virtual event with you that day and then Vanessa with your smoothness, I was like, we should, we should do some more of these. It, it, it did work out pretty well. What have you ladies Um, really learned about yourself from not only having to pivot with that event, but the continual pivoting that you've done after that event. What what are you learning about yourself? What are some things that you're just like, man, I didn't know that I could do that. Or, you know, maybe that's something that I just, you know, really, really wrote off as that's not going to be my strong suit. Now you're just shining. What are some things about yourselves that you're really learning in this season? Mm, to have confidence, man, that that was my biggest thing is just having confidence that one, we're on all on the same playing field right now. We're all dealing with a situation, again, unprecedented situation that, you know, people have never seen before. And so we're all on this learning curve and you really have to approach it on a confident level and just understand, look, 
mistakes are going to happen. Things are going to happen. But how we persevere through that, how we continue to lean on each other for ideas and not pretend like we know it all, be not be afraid to ask questions, not being afraid to delegate and say, look, sis, I need help with something. That is really where our strength shines. And um, that's what I've learned from these ladies um, with the podcast. I feel like my relationship with Zoe and Sonia I, I've pulled it through into my relationships with other partnerships that I've had because it's really given me the strength to be a good businesswoman going forward. And that's why I'm here on this podcast right now. I would not have missed this opportunity to be with these ladies again, because this is where it all started. This is where a lot of this strength was fostered. Yeah. And I, I would say that I learned that it's an iterative process, you know, that growth, right. It's that process of when you plant a seed and you, you nurture it, that it, it does blossom. And that has always been kind of my theme is just to watch this thing blossom into the event that we did, also into the space that I'm in with uh, Meeting Professionals International, um, really, really charged our committee that I was on. I'm on a diversity and inclusion advisory committee for the organization. And that bandwidth of mine had to increase you know, and had to juggle the growing podcast that we're working on, the committee requirements, Jordan's in school remotely, and there's other opportunities coming up. And it just, you know, seeing that there's things that I didn't know how to do, but I was learning them, you know, and, and it was just growing, just watching myself grow. Like it was like an outer body experience. Like, oh, wow, two months ago, I didn't know, like you, you said, you didn't know what a podcast was. And then two months later, here you are knowing what Podbean is and how to upload on iTunes and, you know, Spotify, you just learn and you're growing. And so that willingness to grow is what I saw in myself. Although there has been so much going on outside of the four walls of, of our homes and our apartments where we're forced to be, if you're here in Los Angeles, um, but this has, this is, absolutely been in terms of internally for our family, for me personally, for our family, this has been one of the best years as a, as a, as a mom, as a married person, professionally, financially, like this literally. And, and like I said, 2019 was for me, that was my worst year. When you're that, as you know, Zoe, being on the front line in, in, in military, I was close. I, I probably should have died last year getting hit by the car. So that would in theory be my, be my worst year. Mm -hmm. But this year being so many people's worst year, uh, uh, just from on a circumstantial level has really been one of the greatest years of my life yet. Mm -hmm. and, and we can't, we can't not share that story. We can't feel like I shouldn't speak like that because so many have lost, so many have died. And by all means, may, may God rest everyone's soul who, who was taken by this pandemic. And that's where people feel like, okay, well, if you got through this, if you got through 2019, surely I can get through anything at this point. And so um, may that just be a point where people can build their hope. Um, I want to transition a bit because if, if we're going chronologically, um, right around the time we were launching, there was an uproar in society as um, we talk about, of course, the passing of George Floyd, and then we move into social unrest and um, race relations and, and, and protests. Um, so just in, in terms of the di uh, diversity, inclusion, uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion um, uh, space, you had a lot going on. Um, can you tell our listeners a little bit about what this year has meant for you and the work that you do? Yeah, like, you know, as I explained with, with this growth came um, an explosion uh, of my inbox. You know, I was transitioning and then, you know, just to really look at or look back at the beginning of the year when George Floyd was murdered. And then at the, as we were trying to get an understanding of, of how that happened, then we learned about the murder of Armand Arbery and then the murder of Breonna Taylor. And none of these, um, these cases were new, you know, these, these were happening four years ago prior, we were talking about Trayvon Martin and Philando Castile. So what happened in the, the space of the events industry around diversity, equity, and inclusion, people were just tired. They were done. Like it, with the pandemic going on and the disparities across the black community 
and then you have the social unrest, people were tired and they were demanding that, that change, the demand for change just escalated. And so the inbox, uh, my inbox exploded because now people were like, a lot of companies were saying, we need to do better by the black community. And we know that, you know, one of your main goals was to support black owned businesses. So how do we do this? We need advice. We need guidance. We need support. And I found it, you know, just enlightening, uh, for lack of better words, to see how many companies, how many different professionals was like, we didn't know it was this bad. We, we really didn't know. So where are the resources? Where are the books? Where are the documentaries that we can watch? And so a lot of people were just contacting me to gain information and insight. And then just seeing, you know, across the globe, everywhere, there were protests going on and there was, you know, debates that needed to be settled. So diversity, equity, inclusion had been a mission of mine for the last four or five years, but it really took off in a way this year that I couldn't have predicted. It's unfortunate, you know, that um, George Floyd was murdered, but it definitely, uh, you know, sparked something socially, a social awakening, if you would, that I really believe now diversity, equity, and inclusion is a conversation that is happening in boardrooms and in homes that never, that where it never took place. And there's actually some change that can happen, some sustainable and measurable change. So when you're recognized in that way, something that I wrote on LinkedIn was, you know, it's kind of bittersweet to be recognized for doing the work that needs to be done, you know, uh, trying to convince people the value um, of who you are and, and not to look at the color of your skin as something to devalue you, you know, but if this is the way that I need to spark change and I can do it through the meetings and events industry, then so be it. And I'm really excited just seeing like, and it's work like this, it's work that Zoe is um, doing. I remember we were having a conversation with her and she was just, um, you can see the frustration in um, what she was seeing and just wanting companies to be more involved and understand exactly why inclusion and diversity is absolutely necessary. And to see her be so influential on how like um, these, the meetings and events industry is taking hold of inclusion and diversity and be influential on how they have incorporated it now. It's really helped to also pull camaraderie and people of all colors onto the front lines of holding each other and um, these companies accountable to what this movement means for people. And so um, it, it's like you, like Zoe said, it's only been six months and it's, it's really, it's heartbreaking to see what had to happen in order for us to get to this point. But just as you were saying, um, Sonia, you know, we have to find the silver lining. We have to find the blessings in each of these heartbreaking moments and what they mean for the future and how it's making our future better. You know, the, the previous four years with LB Alliance and wanting to connect event professionals and wanting to really identify black owned businesses in the meetings and events industry. Um, I, I got the, the feedback from a lot of those businesses, like I was preaching to the choir, like a lot of them knew that they didn't have access to the same opportunities or professional development. You know, there's opportunities that I was telling both of you ladies about, and it's like, trying to get you to participate in those spaces was, was challenging, whether it be socioeconomic barriers or just, you know, not necessarily feeling like you belong in those spaces. What 2020 actually did was kind of flip it, right? Where I no longer was preaching to the choir, I was having access to the companies and the decision makers. And that was the game changer. It was a game changer when I'm sitting on a call with, you know, the head of some major companies and they're asking, what do we need to do? And I'm like, that, that confidence that you mentioned earlier, Vanessa, if I didn't have it before, it had to turn all the way up because it was like, you're now being past the mic and people want to know what you have to say. They want to hear about solutions. They want to hear about being strategically committed to diversity, equity, and inclusion. And that is a space that I've moved into and it has been, it has been powerful. This has been a powerful six months. And, and that is the silver lining is that 
um, everything that I had been talking about for four years. In the last six months, I've had an opportunity to pursue in a way that I don't know if it, it would have happened any other way. You know, four years is a long time to be being the loudest voice in the room, but being given the smallest amount of attention sometimes. And when you stick out something for four years, and I remember conversations with you, Zoe, last year and the year prior, like where you would just have jaded conversations and you'd just be like, I, I don't know why I'm doing this. I don't know why I'm here. Nobody's listening. Nobody's paying attention. And, and I just remember thinking, and maybe at sometimes I'm sure I was encouraging, it was kind of like, what you're doing matters. What you're doing matters. What you're doing matters. And it's not until, and look at how four years, all the work, all the blood, sweat, and tears. And in six months, in six months, you were one of the most important people on planet Earth. Look, even though the Time Magazine gave Biden and Harris people of the year, we're going to say that goes to the, the medical workers. But you it know, does. I understand where you're going. It does. It does. That's why I said one of the most, because <laughs> I think that, you know, when you're when you're having an inbox influx like that, clearly there's something important about the work that you do. And so, um, you know, this actually leads me into my next question. And as we close here, I, I definitely want to hear a little bit about what we're all having, you know, our plans and our hearts set on for 2021. I know we have some uh, revealing of different positions and stuff that I want to hear about. But one of the last questions that I actually have for you guys is, uh, or for you ladies is, um, why is content like ours important for the event industry? You know, you both haven't, all three of us for that matter, haven't really been talking about the nitty gritties of event planning or event production. We've actually been talking about the hearts and the minds behind the people who do the events. And, and, and the stuff that is at, uh, in front of us to work on is, is way more important than the actual execution of the event. It's the heart, it's the advocacy work, it's, you know, we're, we're all rooting for some cause that's bigger than ourselves. And so for, for not only this, this podcast, but the, the content that'll be coming out of this, why is content like this important for the event industry? You know, what a podcast does, you know, as, as you were talking about earlier with being a, a digital radio, it's a medium, right? And when I think of a medium, I think of a bridge. And we are, we are those individuals who are often left out of the, the conversations, but we're using our medium, our platform to connect, you know, individuals like ourselves, professionals like ourselves with the greater understanding of the industry and, and showing that there is a commonality, you know, between us. We're all going through this pandemic. We all need to know how to navigate these, these new technologies and new ways of working with remote teams. And so we're, we're kind of minimizing the, the separation and the gap by being a bridge and, and working and using this platform to speak to the industry. Absolutely. And just to piggyback off of that, just going back to, you know, what we've discussed before about, you know, the state of events and the state of the world, we are seeing that the stories behind each of these people that are playing a part in the events industry, it drives, you know, our reaction in the event industry. It drives what our capabilities are when we're planning events. Um, you know, if you've never really experienced adversity, if you have never experienced challenges, you're going to have a hard time in this industry. I feel that everybody who's really excelled, been able to excel in this industry, if you look at them, there is a really impactful story behind who they are. And so, you know, again, just when we talk about building that bridge, that's that's how we do it. We do it by showing the stories and showing what has derived from that those stories being in the industry that we're in right now. I would book in that by just communicating to listeners that, you know, Content like this is important because we all need a community to belong to. And if I was honest, for a long time, I've been in the event industry um, and entertainment industry, which really do kind of, you know, go in and out from each other. I, I've professionally 12 years, but since I was 18 years old, I've been in the, in the entertainment industry. And so I would say that the biggest thing that I was always looking for was where do I fit in? Where is my community? 
Where are the people that are speaking specifics to me? I can find how I can fit into specifics as it's told to the, to the masses, but where do I fit in? Where's my community? And I think it's really important that as you're forecasting your 2021, um, it's going to be really important to find a community. It's going to be really important to find a team of people, a group of people with like-minded, vested interest to help drive whatever you, you believe that you're called to do within that industry. And so... Um, as we forecast 2021, uh, what you can expect from the state of events is you can expect, of course, more content. We're going to be putting out um, more content per month. Uh, right now, we, we haven't met necessarily the episodic numbers that I, that I envisioned. And so next, uh, next year, you can expect that we will have a, uh, a health and wellness segment very near and dear to my heart. Uh, Zoe is in incredibly passionate um, and, and very eloquent in the way that she communicates DEI efforts. You can expect a segment from, uh, from her. Um, and then Vanessa, I, I kind of actually want to hear about what, what do you got your hands in? I know you have a new title behind your name. So tell all our listeners what you're doing these days. All right. So I'm still in the cannabis industry because um, it's a very fun industry. Um, but uh, yeah, so I'm still in the event space, but um, I recently signed on as the CEO of the Cannabis Wedding Expo. Uh, Zoe and Sonia knew about this for a very, very long time since like we first like started having, I first started having the conversations uh, with the owner of the expo. And um, I appreciate them so much for just like keeping it under the radar and just like kind of like giving me so much encouragement through the process. Um, because again, you know, it's, it's a crazy time and you don't know what events are going to look like um, this year. So that was really exciting now to be able to announce that 2021 is looking very fruitful. Um, I'm also on the board of Mommies and Mary Jane, keeping to my mommy roots. Um, that's another commonality that I have with these ladies is what it means to be a businesswoman and a mother at the same time. Sometimes they feed off of each other. Sometimes they just, they clash. So <laughs> it's, it's um, definitely been, again, when you talk about communities, it's amazing to have such a great, strong support group that can get you to, through those times that you feel like you just want to break down and cry. And they're like, nah, sis, you, you got to keep going. This is, this is what we're all about. So um, yeah, that's, that's what I got going on right now. And then we have two expos, the Cannabis Wedding Expo. We are back on the market for doing these expos in Denver. Uh, both of them are going to be in the weekend of March. So we have Denver and we have Las Vegas coming up. And I hope we'll see you guys there, hopefully for our first like in-person events again. So we'll see how it goes. And so yes. how about for you? What you got going on? Oh, so I just found out uh, two days ago that uh, myself and Tanita Mullen will return as the co-chairs of MPI's Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion what? Committee for 2021. And, and so we're right now looking at, you know, the, the applications for, for members that did apply. And I did attend my first in-person event again with MPI. That was the World Education Congress. And that, and that taught me a lot about what to look for for 2021, but really focused on uh, this inclusive event strategy segment uh, that we're recording for right now. So that will be released in 2021 as, as a way to launch some curriculum with my new endeavor is called Condazo Consulting Group where we're focused on the meetings and events industry, reimagining, uh, you know, training and education through a DEI lens. So from information to application, we are consultants, DEI practitioners and facilitators in the meetings and events industry. So I'm really excited about that endeavor. And, you know, uh, like I said, using state of events as a bridge to uh, market, you know, that, that curriculum and education that we're doing through this upcoming segment. From my my arena and then the space that I'm in, um, you can expect uh, to not only obviously get more podcast episodes, but um, we're looking at more content just in general. We we launched as launched as a digital content platform, and so you will uh, get more uh, content. And I am looking to start recording at a uh, studio that I've been introduced to. It's actually. Um, powered uh, here in Los Angeles through some pretty amazing people who have actually been um, been in the game for a while. And so we'll be uh, hopefully partnering with them to record our content in-house. 
Uh, they have started under COVID standards, started to let you come into the studio again. So we're looking at studio recordings, which is always fun. Um, and then also uh, visual. So, so a lot, lot more visual content coming from our end, uh, hoping to do, you know, short content, something that um, I've just been in that space for a while and it, I can do that in my sleep as well. So I'm just really going to be honing in on making sure that this platform and others uh, really, uh, you know, just maintain a space for the event industry to, um, to really get uh, the notoriety and, and the, the visuals that it needs, because I think a lot of times we can always associate the event industry with being behind the scenes, but it's time that we come to the front of the screen, y'all front of the screen. Mm -hmm. So that's what we're going to be doing. Um, ladies, thank you for your time. Thank you for your investment into this uh, podcast and the work that we're all doing. Thank you for your friendships. Thank you for your love and your support this year. Uh, may God bless 2021 for everyone listening, as well as for my girlfriends here. And y'all ain't going to where you stuck with me. Friends forever. BFFs. What up? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> We hope you have enjoyed our year in review. You know, we simply could not have made something like this happen this year without the support of so many people behind the scenes. So a huge thank you to the following. Joy Ikuta, writer and admin support. Jessica Cole, executive support. Grant Muirhead, editor and technical producer. All of our speakers and special guests. And the most important people in our lives. Our husbands, partners, and children. You've been listening to The State of Events, where event professionals connect. For more episodes, you can find us on Spotify and iTunes. To engage with us on social media, look for at the underscore state of events. Also, we would love to hear from you. If you have any suggestions, topic ideas, or if you'd like to sponsor an upcoming episode, send us an email to inquiries at thestateofevents.com. Thank you so much for joining The State of Events, where event professionals connect.